OpenAI's function calling was one of the best upgrades to the OpenAI API ever. However, in my opinion, its implementation in Langchain is quite a disaster. I'll show you why I think this way and present an approach I believe is better. A brief explanation of how the OpenAI function calling works. You define a list of dictionaries that describe the functionality of functions. GPT will then interpret whether it needs a function to answer the question or not. If not, the API returns an object with role and content, and the content is the final answer. If a function is required, the content is null, and there is an additional attribute, function call, with the name of the required function and the necessary function arguments. Let's now look at this in code. You will find the link to the code in the description. Okay, I'm here in VS Code, and as you can see, we jump straight in. Here is an array or a list of function definitions. Each definition is a dictionary. The name of the function is get pizza info. The description is get name and price for pizza of a restaurant. And then we've got properties like the pizza name and the type and also the description of um, this parameter here. Then we've got a second one, place order, where we can place an order for a pizza of the restaurant. And here we can see we've got multiple properties like pizza name, the quantity, and the address the pizza should be shipped to. Here you can see they are all required arguments. So let's define this and now use Langchain to work with it. So from Langchain, we can import create OpenAI FN chain. So this function will create an LM chain which makes use of OpenAI function calling. So let's first create an LLM. We will use GPT 3.5 Turbo for this. With a temperature of zero, we give in um, a little template and then we create this LLM chain here with the functions as first argument, then the LLM, the prompt, and also say we use the verbose mode to get more information about the actual call. So let's define this and then run the function. And we ask how much does pizza y cost? And if, as you can see, we get back the name, get pizza info, and also the arguments, pizza name, and Hawaii. This can now be passed to the actual function. Let's do it now for the second function and we want to order pizza now to pizza by to fake street one to three. So let's try this. And as you can see, this also works. We can see that we get place order. This is the correct function. To do this, we get the pizza name, the quantity and also the address. So but what happens if we ask a question not related to one of the functions. How old did the queen get? So, as you can see, this does not work and we get a key error function call. So the function call of Langchain expects that we only use this chain in combination with a function, but otherwise it does not work. And I think that's pretty problematic because this makes our chain far less dynamic. And I will show you how we can do better. Okay, let's jump to the vanilla API and I will show you how we can do it with the vanilla API from OpenAI of the package. I defined a chat function and this makes a request with the GPT model and it takes in a message which will miss the query and we also pass in functions as additional argument here. So this replicates the functionality from Langchain but this is just the vanilla API. So if we ask I want to order two pizza by two, one, two, three fake street. We can see that we now get back this function call argument. This is the one which was not found when we asked how old did the queen get. So if we ask how old did the queen get, we receive back an OpenAI object, but without that function call. And this is why in Langchain it failed. So it did not find this function call key. So let's run it again. I want to order two pizza by two, one, two, three fake street, but now save the output in a variable. And as you can see, the type of the variable is of type class OpenAI. So it looks like a dictionary, but actually it's a custom class from the OpenAI package. And now we can see, we can run the get method and try to get function call. And as you can see, this uh, now prints us back function call needed. So we can use this if statement to implement some custom behavior here. So let's first create a fake database. The fake database is just a dictionary with pizzas we can order and also an empty list with all the orders which were made. And now let's create the actual functions 
that we created the definitions for. So get pizza info and place order. These are the actual functions. For the get pizza info, we retrieve the information from that fake database by its name. And then if we don't find the pizza, we want to provide a string. And otherwise we want to provide a dictionary with the pizza name, the price, and also the list of ingredients we defined here. So for creating the order, we want to define that we only allow orders if the pizza is in the database, otherwise we return a string, and, and which tells the user that we don't have that pizza, and we have to tell uh, also the model that we only want a quantity which is of course larger than zero, otherwise it's not the correct order. Then we update the order database, put in the order here inside that list, and return a string to the user that the order was placed successfully with the order ID, and also the total price. Okay, now we use that functions. And first, again, let's create that OpenAI object here. And it contains the function call. As you can see, content is null as expected. We can see the arguments, pizza name, Hawaii, quantity two, and the correct address. To make that work, we have to first extract the name for the function, which is place order, and then also the arguments. The arguments are currently a JSON object, so we can convert that with JSON loads from a JSON to a dictionary. If you run that, we can see that now we've got our function and also the arguments for that function as a dictionary. So let's now do it again, but save it now in a variable. The function name will be stored in the variable function name and the arguments in the dictionary arguments. And then we can run the function, place orders, and here we can print the response. So as we can see, order placed successfully, your order ID is one, the total price is $30. So now we could use the output here and pass it to an LLM again to create a more dynamic and realistic response for the user. So this is just, of course, a normal string and we want the LLM to create it in a better way. And we also normally want that place order function to be used dynamically. So, so I can normally store all of the functions in some kind of dictionary or whatever and extract it by its function name provided by the LLM. So let's do this now and create a chatbot which always returns a string to the user so it abstracts away that function call output. So let's achieve this with a custom class. We call that class chatbot and as you can see in the constructor it takes a single argument which is the fake database and then we've got a main function and the main function of this class is the chat function. So the first time we make an OpenAI request. This is the same functionality I provided you an example. We pass a query and then the query gets passed to the OpenAI API. We pass in all of our functions as arguments and return a response from that initial request. So this is the initial response and now we extract the message from that initial response. And if the message has got this function call property, we now want to extract the function name and also the arguments which are in a JSON format and store them in the function name variable and also in the arguments variable. And now we can dynamically get the function by its function name. So how does it work with the get attribute um, function? This comes built in from Python and we can get the attribute of a class. So all of our functions are stored in the class chatbot, as you can see, this is uh, our method now, not a normal function. Every method in a class is just an attribute we can access with the get attribute function. So now let's have a look at what happens here. So we get this function now dynamically. So now we can make a follow-up request and this is defined here. It's just a little bit more verbose here. So in the follow-up request, you take the initial message and now you pass in another dictionary for the API with a role function. You pass in the function name and also the content of the function, which is the function response. So for example, for the place order, this is here now the correct um, function response we want to pass to the LLM too. And now we can use that follow up request, get another response. And now we return the final response to the user. If we don't have that function call argument firsthand, we just return the message content. So this makes our API calls far more dynamic and we can abstract all of this complex logic away from the user. So let's create that class. And now we create a new bot and we can see 
we can just use the chat method here. I want to order one pizza margarita to one three four fake street. And let's do this twice. So here we want a response. Again, um, now let's check the response here. I apologize for the confusion. It seems that we don't have pizza by on our menu. That's a bit weird. I think it might be case sensitive, which in a real application you would have to fix. Let's try it again and check the response. So now we can see your order for two pizza Y has been successfully placed. The order will be delivered to one to three fake street. Okay, now let's try one pizza salami. Okay, here's the output. I apologize, but we do not have the option to order pizza salami. Can you please choose a different pizza from our menu? So this works now. And as you can also see in the database, we've got now multiple orders. So it actually updates our database. So this is what the OpenAI function calling is designed for, I think. So we make something in the back end and provide the user a very nice response. And what's very important, if we try it again and try to run bot.chat and then how old is the queen, it should not crash. So that's the difference to the length chain implementation. I'm sorry, but I don't have access to real time information. As you can see, this also works. And now I think this is the far better solution than the LangChain implementation. So what do you think about LangChain and OpenAI function calling? Did you have a better experience than me? Please let me know in the comments. And if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video. See you. Bye bye.